This video is sponsored by Circle Space. Stick around to the end of the video and I'll tell you more, but until then... Come on, you can I was joking, it was April Fools! Squarespace is the leading one-stop shop website platform for your art, your merch, or your business. Alright, sorry I pulled the wool over your eyes, we'll talk about it later, but first, show me my lovely members. Wait, where's the... Today we're gonna to be looking at the worst of the worst. Games that have made their mark in history as some of the worst titles. What? They really needed to call it this? I mean, like, it's the name of the console and it's a new generation, but in hindsight, it's a really good name. Titles. Uh, they're important. I mean, got you here, didn't it? <laughs> Didn't it? When you get a job and the title's Customer Experience Coordinator, oh, it has a nice ring to it. It might be good for my resume. Again? Really? Again? So, titles matter. Most of my life's ambitions are held captive if a title contains one too many, uh, weasel words. What, what is that even? Why are there rodents in my title? RAT! Some of my stupidest successes are from titles that took me three seconds. The Mario game they wanted you to forget about. Who's they? Super Smash Bros. Menus. Yeah, I sure hope it does. When I wrote this, I'm like, what, what is a 10 year old gonna think is the coolest video? Getting a title to adequately convey what you want is difficult, while also making the title sound cool. Hey. See, this just doesn't have the same ring. Mario goes woke in his latest gaming title, you know, you see? But really, how do you condense 100 hours of gameplay into- ah! Seriously, if you're making a game, how do you decide on a name? It'll be the first thing anyone hears about it. Is it based on the gameplay? Some sort of object in the story? Or just something completely random? What if someone who's reading it just hates the letter K? You're doomed! Like, a part of me thinks a game title really doesn't need to make sense or cover all your bases. Sometimes if it just sounds cool, that's enough. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure we're all on Earth. Sometimes titles like to be cute, like Deltarune being an anagram for Undertale. But really, I think Deltarune was concepted before Undertale. So really, Undertale may be the anagram of Deltarune. And when this happened, inevitably, nature led to a deal of nuts that Ultra needed to run elated on things that are unrelated and unaltered. Sometimes it makes sense, but like not until the end of the game. Oh! Like Metroid. Oh yeah. So uh, when's this Metroid guy appearing? It'd be like if Shrek appeared 80 minutes into the movie, like. But a part of me, the pedantic part. Oh, oh man. This is just so just to the point. It sounds good and it's to the point. It's to the plant. It's good, it's no guessing. I wonder how long it took for them to get around. Oh my God. So, you know, maybe I'm just a little boring, but I like when things make sense. That's a car. That's a dog. What the fuck? Cave story? Eh? Huh? Eh. Huh. Luigi's Mansion. I mean, come on. There he is. And <laughs> there's his house. I really thought his sequel was gonna be called like, Luigi's condo, Luigi's hotel, Luigi's duplex. This also has the side effect of me unreasonably getting upset, like Five Nights at Freddy's. Not one of these games only has five nights! Not one! So your manager saying, oh, can you stay an extra hour? No! No! Speaking of, our next category is... <laughs> Lies. And you'd think this is a current age thing, but they've been doing this since the beginning. Super Mario Brothers. You ever hear of this? It became a series, but its second game wasn't even a new game! Twice! Two Mario 2s, two times, neither of them are actually new! Alex, Jesus Christ, you've been speaking about video game titles for minutes now. Do you think you assign positive or negative labels to otherwise neutral facets of literature in an obsessive and unhealthy- No! While kids were learning instruments or playing sports, I was spending time speculating what the next name suffix of the next Smash game would be. You know, after Brawl, it was like, what is it gonna be? Super Smash Bros. Crusade. Super Smash Bros. Rumble. Super Smash Clash. Actually, a lot of these became fan games eventually. And what we got really blew our expectations.
Do we dream in daylight only to cushion the blows of reality? I mean, Ultimate is a good subtitle. I'd have preferred something a little more hard though, you know, like Super Smash Bros. Supreme, Ultra Deluxe, Mega Mix. What other synonyms do we got? Closing, extreme, capping, chips down, furthermore! I don't know what the next game will be called. I just always thought, you know, it'd be cool if they just called it Smash Brothers. Just Smash Brothers. Another series that just goes off the rails. <laughs> Bro cannot keep it together. Like, it's like a game of connections. How is the through line Sonic? He even did the reboot thing, like, oh. This is like something that sounds cool at the beginning, but then becomes completely annoying for anybody a decade later. Sonic the Hedgehog, Mortal Kombat, Battletoads, Punch-Out, Tomb Raider, Ninja Gaiden, <laughs> Donkey Kong Country. Donkey Kong Country. Donkey Kong Country! These guys are morons. Clearly Nintendo did it best. I will never escape you. We will reach the heat death of the universe. All that ever is will cave in on itself, and a new universe will be born to- I was wondering what that was. So, what do I consider some of my least favorite game titles? You know, with all of these titles, I've noticed many trends. Games from the West, otherwise known as here, just kind of smash together two words and try to sound like a blockbuster movie. Far Cry, Overwatch, Titanfall, Outlast, Payday, Watch Dogs, Battlefield, or they're just marketable and punny. Like, it takes two. Two what? Titles like these don't make me feel like I'm entering a world, it makes me feel like I'm reading a Reddit comment. The Last of Us. Well, this must be the end of civilization. God damn it. We are the last of us. We are the last of us too. I guess technically the second game would be the last of us and the first game would have been the second last of us. <laughs> Don't worry, Neil, you can, I'll send you my wire information. And I think my problem with this is because they're just like idioms, you know? Left for dead, Call of Duty, Gears of War. Yeah, really idiotic. And for, for me, it's because these phrases are very cliche and it's very much trying to appeal to like a Hollywood standard of titling formats. Ah, oh, thanks for coming in today. Uh, we're excited to see what you have to show us. <laughs> get, get, get the fuck out of my office. What if every game was like this? Bigger fish to fry. A wild goose chase. The perfect storm. <sighs> What's in a blue moon? Feeling under the weather. It's a piece of cake. That's a money. Get this thing away from me. Actually, indie games are cool because they like bragging that they don't have to answer to anyone. V, 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 B. <laughs> Disco Elysium. That, that still doesn't make sense and I play the whole game. I think saying this is gonna trigger my gag reflex. Milk inside a bag inside of a bag of milk. Did I say that? Did I? Is that right? Maybe. They're compensating for something, like a budget. You wanna hear the longest English game title? Cthulhu Saves the World, Super Hyper Enhanced Championship Edition, Alpha Diamond DX Plus Alpha FES HD, Premium Enhanced Game of the Year Collector's Edition. You wouldn't get it. And finally, Japanese game titles. These are often either overly general or way too specific. The Legend of Zelda. Well, what is it? You, you're just not gonna tell us? I feel like your friend coming up to you, you're like, Oh, I got some hot tea, and then I get everyone in the call, and then... Dick. Dragon Quest. You know, I played, like, a little bit of one. I do not recall any dragons being a part of the story. Xenoblades, and Splatoons, and Shin Megamis. What the hell is it near? And why is its replicant on version 1.22474487139? Final Fantasy, the most general of titles, was actually called this because the main developer said, you know, this is it. The company's over. If this doesn't work out, I'm going back to college. If this was made today, though, yeah. Then there's shit like Chrono Trigger, Fire Emblem, Persona. These tell me nothing until I actually play the game, which I sort of respect on an artistic level, like... <laughs> the frindle of games. <laughs> Is this about firefighters? You know, if I didn't know any better, I would think these two games were in the same genre. In closing, I really do just miss when games had interesting titles, whether it was something I didn't know or just something that was gripping. And that could be because a lot of those are Japanese game titles, where they can store a lot more information in fewer characters because of their language, compared to our feeble little language called English. There, there, there. 
So when we translate Japanese game titles, we get a full-on thesis. Like A Link to the Past. It's a good title. But the Japanese version? I think I just shit myself. The world ends with you. A little egocentric, but what's the Japanese version? Okay, that's a good one. But then we also get into the really, really weird ones. Like fighting games? <laughs> what the fuck? Look at these titles! Wait, that's just a patch. No way that's an original game. You think that's bad? <laughs> Did they make this title while holding their nose? So, you know, as much as I cherish our time together, we must ask the burning question. What is the worst gaming title that has ever been created? And it's actually shared with the title of the game that has the longest title in any language. What, that's it? You know, I was expecting something a little more- oh! do this one time only. Nata Iro High School. Seishun Hakusho. Summertime High School. A young man's notes. How a new exchange student like myself ran into a childhood friend on a school tour then for some reason became super popular with the girls for his daily scoops on the school photography club even though he only takes the panty shots and what he thinks as he goes on dates during his summer of island high school life what a dream he sees the shores he sees the scenes why is the game about taking shots of girls under their blouses it's just fucking disgusting i don't get japan in their game market you can't get me on the scene i'm fucked it you can't get me in these games i don't get the pain i don't get the deciding choices of these companies and why do we let them decide why do we not decide for ourselves how we live our life how we get to get out of the chambers of the underworld of the capitalist gamers i don't care anymore i don't even see it you don't get me anymore i don't even feel it i'm mad i'm pissed i'm angry you get me short hey guys it's alax thank you for watching the video and liking it because you did definitely do that, you must have done it. Of course, we have to talk about the sponsor for this video, Squarespace. I've been partnering with Squarespace for a while, and it's so easy to see why the platform is so good for us artists. Just like a video game title needs to convey the entire premise of the game, your website needs to do that in a visual way. It's not an easy task, and it's made a lot harder when you're trying to mess around with HTML or CSS. Squarespace, however, offers a complete solution for that that takes out all the hassle of coding and lets you focus on what you do best. So you start building your website and pick a template that works for you. Now you can just use that and go along, but you can also customize it to your heart's content. It's not even just fonts or colors. The Fluid Engine allows you to drag and drop different components to your website to really make it your own. Sure, it's a website builder, but it comes with all of the functionality and expression that you'd expect from doing it yourself, minus the coding. Like for example, when you're coding a website, assets can be very hard to plug in wherever you want, but with their asset browser, you just download them to the website, and then when you want to use them, you just pick them from your library. So, whether you're selling your handmade merch, you have art and you're looking for commissions, Squarespace takes the hassle out of all of the hard parts of having a website and lets you focus on just expressing yourself. So, if you want to give it a look, head over to squarespace.com right now for a free trial. And when you're ready to make your own site, go to squarespace.com slash relaxalax to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. Thanks for Squarespace for sponsoring this video, and thank you to all of you for watching all the way to the end. You know, I really appreciate getting... I, I used to do this a lot more where I would just talk on the end card and you guys could just hear how, how I actually feel about stuff. I liked making this video a lot. It was super fun to just have a topic where I'm like, here's the topic. I'm just gonna... I really, really improved a lot of this, and I just kind of uh, let loose with sort of my creative spirit because uh, a lot of the time I, I do have a formula when I'm making these videos, but this one, I just kind of like went for it. I was going to do an April Fool's topic, but then I decided to do this instead because I thought it would be just ridiculous. In this time of year, I can always just decide to do something absolutely wild and it'll fit for April Fool's. So um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you liked the video if you did enjoy it. And once again, thank you to the members. 